Welcome to Ask GMBN. It's a very simple process. You ask questions, we answer them. Doddy, should we just get straight into it? Yeah, let's get cracking. Right, first question for you is from Robert Paulson, and he says, I've recently rented a Trek Stash 5 uh, from a local bike shop. On the first day out on the trails, I was totally hooked. Good news. Yeah. Uh, I'm contemplating buying one from their rental fleet. I like the 29 plus hardtail. Before I pull the trigger on it, I would value the crew's opinion. So what do you think? He's got $1,600 to spend on a new toy. Are there any other options? Or is the stash one to go for? Well, there are other options. Surly yeah. makes a nice sort of 29 plus bike. Souser yeah. do as well. But do you mm. know, I'd have the Trek in a heartbeat. I think yeah. it's a great bike. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about those. Yeah, I do like that little elevated chain stay. It's yeah. a bit quirky looking. Real tight out back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Surly is yeah. nice though. They Surly are, is nice, very kind of, cool. kind of pretty. Kind Maybe of cooler, but I think the Trek yeah. is the one for you. There you go. Dolly yeah. knows his bike, so mm. it's good, good views. Okay, Manuel says, is it safe to transport a carbon frame bike with a Ooh. car rack? that secures the bike from the top tube, like a Saris. Or a Saris type rack that yeah. grabs on. I would err on the side of caution. What do you think? I, I, I'm always a bit worried about clamping carbon. It frightens me. Uh, do you know what? I, I, I think you're probably all right. If it was a road bike, not a chance. But then if it's a road bike, you should be on the road riding it. Not <laughs> yeah, it you the should be rack. pedaling it along. Yeah. Um, most mountain bikes, the carbon frames are a lot tougher than you think. Um, I'd say you're fine, but if you're unsure about it, I'd put a rag or something over the top to just protect it and just don't over tighten it. And you've also got yeah. your wheel security there as well, so make sure you can tighten everything up. Yeah, good advice. Wrap it up. Yeah. Wrap it up nice and safe. Okay, Achilles says, Hi, I'm a seafarer, frequently away for four to six months. Um, how can I That's store done. the bike and keep the seals lubricated without damage? Um, or should I do a fork seal service every time? Well, you could do a fork seal service every time. That's a nice way of keeping them nice and supple. Mm -hmm. Or you could put your bike either upside down or upright with the front wheel high. And that way the sort of oil can lubricate the seals for you. Ah, and uh, just give it a nice little cycle through before you use it. And if you still think you need to apply a bit more lube, roll off the little garter spring just by hand so you don't damage it. And then get the little plastic end of a cable tie, just poke it underneath there. Mm -hmm. um, under the wiper seal that is, and then just put a little bit of oil just around the edge and then put the spring back. Ah, mini service. Yeah, just mini enough just to keep your, your wiper seals nice and lubed. Like it, yeah. like it. Um, and while we're on that subject, um, why don't we take a look at how to service your fork video, which we've made previously. Mm. Today we're going to do the fork lower leg service. Okay, next question is from Adam Crouch. Um, Hi guys, hello. Uh, having trouble with my pedaling efficiency when going uphill. Uh, my full sus bike doesn't have lockout for the rear shock, and as soon as I go uphill, my pedaling efficiency is gone. Nightmare. Mm. Um, I've set my sag up correctly, I think, so would adding tokens help at all, or should I add more air to the rear shock? A um, few things here. Double check that sag, because that is the likely culprit a lot of the time. Um, Adding tokens, that does make your shot more progressive and it can make it sit up a little bit in the middle of the stroke. Um, but you probably also want to check out your saddle position. Um, you see a lot of riders with a saddle, they slam them back, which is nice and comfortable on your flatter terrain and descending, but actually running it slightly more forwards puts you more over the bottom bracket shell, so the fulcrum of the bike. So just check those things yeah, out and then yeah. well, let us know how you get on. Seat position is a real common one. Yeah. You see that a lot. Yeah, Matthias Bolness says, I'm sort of new on mountain biking, and what I really want to know is about forks, shocks, brakes, and every component of Enduro and downhill bikes. So I wonder, are you can do some more videos about the types of pros and cons and things? Um, <laughs> to come to the right place. You certainly yeah, have. Yeah. Click on the videos tab up on the top of our channel on YouTube there, and you'll see there is absolutely hundreds of videos for you to dive into. Um, with all sorts of tech, but we've got more coming up. Yeah, we're going to go to Eurobike and of course Interbikes. There's going to be loads of tech for next year's products coming, so keep yeah. your eyes peeled for that. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, Cycling Paul says, um, in your opinion, could a typical UK trail rider train over winter and enter a local BC, um, guessing British Columbia XC race, uh, and place at least in the top half or better? That is a how very difficult. Extreme, yeah. yeah, that's a very difficult question, actually. Um, well, we have got yeah. a pretty high standard of riders on on the last part, I think, on yeah, Fry Little yeah. Island, really. Yes, um, yes. We could put Neil to the test. We could. Yeah, say we Neil have to... got a very typical mountain bike rider here yeah. called Neil. We could make him train 
and well, send him over there. Well, and he's actually been talking about the BC bike race. Yes, so yeah. Could well, be something in that. Watch this space because you never know, you might have a Nelio over there racing you yeah. guys soon. You never know. Um, Eric Headstrom says, I have got a 2018 Santa Cruz Bronson on aluminium on order in my local shop. This year, Santa Cruz has decided to only have the ISCG chain guide tabs on the carbon frames. Uh, riding in Phoenix, where I live, almost dictates having a bash guard. What bottom bracket bash guards do you suggest, and do I need an adapter? He um, does need an adapter. Yeah, you definitely yeah. need an adapter, and you'll actually find that a lot of modern chain guides actually come with them still. <laughs> um, mm. MRP or um, E13, really. Yeah. Uh, the most recent one I used was an MRP, and it's tiny, and it just is perfect, like a little skid plate for the underneath. Yeah, So good suggestion. Never broken one of those. So. Yeah. And if you're wondering, here is a video that we made previously about fitting a chain guide. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to fit a chain guide. Okay, this is a great question from Daniel Nesnadel, who's asking, um, he's got a Merida 120, uh, which he recently bought. He'd say it's more cross country than a trail bike. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think he could ride it down trails like A-Line in Whistler? Now that's that's a good question, isn't it? Um, okay, so no doubt you could because I've ridden a hard tail down there yeah. many moons back. Yeah, no um, doubt. However, A line isn't as smooth as you might think it is on all the videos you see. No. So it's full of braking bumps and stuff. But there's no reason why you can ride it. The jumps are really smooth, even if you don't clear them. But at the same time, taking a bike like that to a bike park, you're going to give it a good old thrashing and it probably won't stand up to it too well. So if you're thinking of going somewhere like Whistler for holiday, there's nothing wrong with taking your bike to use, use out there, but perhaps consider hiring a bike just yeah. for the park. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good advice. Damage I think, someone like, else's bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I always think, on, on, if you're asking yourself that question, can I, should I, then maybe you shouldn't yet. Because yeah. it might mean that you're just not you're not used to that bike enough yet and you don't know what it can do, and maybe A-Line's not the place to find out. Um, Not at that so, speed, yeah. No, so, yeah. you know, give or take in it on that one. Okay, next up we've got Brodin. I've recently replaced both sets of brake pads due to contamination on a set of Shimano hydraulic brakes. Two weeks later, the front one is squealing again, but oh. not the back one. Oh, Any thoughts? Yeah, so yeah. Th it's this is be, a bugbear for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, and there's nothing worse than squealing brakes. It's got to be more contamination, isn't it? Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd have thought so. Um, really unlucky if this has happened to you. So it could be... Um, the banjo, which is like a small fitting that goes up to the hose. It's a little four millimeter um, Allen or hex wrench to tighten that. If you check that, because if that's the tiniest bit loose and that cable moves, um, it's only O-rings that seal the oil in at that point. And all you need is one drop of oil to find its way onto the pads and then they're toast. Uh, but also at the same time, if you're unlucky, it could be the actual pistons themselves leaking. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna happen here and there to a set of brakes. Uh, if you're unsure, you might want to get these checked out by your, your bike shop just yeah. to check that. They'll be able to tell you that. Yeah, I think it's the banjo myself. Yeah. Um, it's much more unlikely to be the pads. Um, and if you want to check out this next video, it will give you a few clues to stop that squealing brake. Hope you get it fixed. Follow this process and you'll have quiet brakes by the end of it. Okay, now stuff quick fire. You ready, Mark? Yes. Okay, James Hill, XC or Enduro for the whole enchilada in Moab? Ah, uh, XC. XC, I'd say. Nah, Enduro. I'd enduro. Say. Yeah. Really? You've got a good story. Well, about, no, I, I did see two insane riders on track bikes, I think they were XC. You go up it once a week. It's like 27 miles or something. That's what good. I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, oh, oh XC oh, then. Oh, were, you going going, were you just going yeah. down? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Right, next question is from. Fred Vafasor, who says, um, I'm thinking of getting a new mountain bike. I want a full suspension 140 to 160 millimeter travel. What would you recommend? Uh, mm. Canyon Can Spectral. Canyon's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nukeproof Mega. Scott's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I really like the new Nukeproof, actually. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Blake's got a nice one. <laughs> Quite jealous. Yeah, actually. Jealous. Yeah, Mega's yeah. really nice. I meant the bike. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Only Bro Games. Can you give my project bike a name? Uh, Arthur. Dave. <laughs> James Hill says, when will you do the epic ride on Moab? Oh, it's a bit of a theme here with Moab. Yes, yeah. As soon as possible. Yeah, you please. really want to go there, don't you? That's my yeah, favourite. I'd like to go too. Yeah. Um, David Hardstaff says, are solid puncture-proof tyres any good? No. No. No, perhaps no. not. No. 
No. To improve from what they were, but still no. <laughs> Chris Markin, um, I've never had my rear shock serviced. Uh, I know about front suspension, but should I get my rear shock serviced regularly? Mm, depends how often you ride, but annually would be a good idea to get it looked at, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good number, annually. Uh, Sven Affinson, can you make a video on Blake Sampson doing dirt jumps on a fat bike? Oh, yes we can. <laughs> yes we can, that's yeah. just a solid yes. As soon as yes. possible. Solid yeah. yes. Kevin Whitelaw, I notice while going downhill, I keep my feet the same way, right foot in the back, left yeah. foot in the front. Yeah. Trying it the other way feels awkward, it will. Yeah. Should I get used to both ways? No. Mm, I'd say no. yes, actually. No, I'd say no. no you don't need no. to, but it's always nice to be able to sort of switch your feet between turns. Yeah, oh, between turns yeah. for sure, but yeah. if you feel like you've got a comfortable front foot... Oh, stick with that. Stick yeah, with that. you're right. Stick yeah. with that, yeah. Um, James Carr, um, if your forks are not that stiff, uh, cross-country forks, Will it snap? Um, there's um, no reason why it should snap. Yeah. Um, For example, taking your cross bike down a double black downhill run. Uh, yes, it could snap. <laughs> <laughs> Time for correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so we've got a couple of great videos here. So first up, we've got Cameron Ravenhill. It says, how can I improve my jumping to get more height? Right, let's have a look at this. Cameron, come in. Wow! That is, a, I'm gonna have to look at it again. That is a serious takeoff. She has got a lot of height now, from a little ramp. Yeah, there. I mean, I don't know if you could get much more height. What you are gonna need to do is hit it with more speed if you want more height, but that is, an incredibly short takeoff, really, really severe. Um, it's more of a trick ramp, really. So yeah. I think you're getting good height. You could go more, but what I would look to doing is is maybe changing your ramp, <laughs> as getting yeah. a slightly longer one. Um, a bit more gonna, transition on Yeah, a bit more transition. You can hit it at speed and you can actually then pump out of that and get really height mm. that you're in control of. Whereas I think hitting this much faster it's not necessarily going to end well. Might go out the front door a bit. Yeah. There, yeah. What that ramp's really great for is jumping up onto things. Yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe see, there's a little wall behind you there. Maybe try and jump up onto that. Yeah. That's what I'd have done. Had Pretty fun nailed with it. Down, Had fun think. with yeah. it. Okay, next, correct me if I'm wrong, is Jess Kinder, and she's been out in um, Rotorua. Mm. Nice. Uh, and she's been trying a little bit of a step down. So take a look at this, Doddy. What do you think? She comes running into it. Nice looking trail, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It's nice. Here she comes. Go on, Jess. Oh. Oh. Wait, do you know what? That's, that's not bad. Yeah. Weight was a little bit far back on yeah, landing Yeah, there. she just sits back down. See that heels just drop as she comes yeah. into that landing. I think that's more that she was just like feeling really prepared. And I think a few more goes, that's going to go away. Yeah, I'd, I would also actually put a little bit of pop just as you take off, just to help you over that. Yeah. So notice that you said earlier that you, you hung up the rear wheel on your first attempt, uh, which she wouldn't let us see, actually. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of pop and just keep, keep at it. It's yeah. great, good skills. Yeah, good skills, definitely progressing really well. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, then make sure you give us a thumbs up like. But if you'd like to see more videos from GMBN, then why don't you click here to see our Fort Bill epic ride? Yeah, and click over here for uh, six maintenance like how-tos that everyone should know. And of course, hit that logo to subscribe. And of course, like I said, make sure you give us some thumbs. Give us some love. See you next time.